Hey everyone, so I finally got to watch Tenet this past weekend and I've got to admit I was a little nervous to check it out. I have been told by so many people that it was going to be extremely confusing and I was going to have to watch it multiple times to understand it, but luckily my husband and I were able to watch it together. We turned our sound bar from movie to voice so that we could hear better because we had heard there was a lot of muffled dialogue and we just really were able to team up and figure it out together as we watched the movie. It really wasn't super confusing. There was maybe one or two moments that were confusing at first, but then they fixed themselves right up as they explained themselves a minute or two later. So for those of you who have watched Tenet and still have questions, you have come to the right place. I am going to explain to you the movie Tenet and why it is such a good movie. It's got a unique and super interesting plot. And I'm, I was a big fan of this movie. I really enjoyed it a lot. Hey, Tessa from Mama's Geeky here. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel. Now, fair warning, there are going to be massive spoilers in this video because, yeah, I'm going to discuss major plot points and even explain the ending of Tenet. So make sure that if you have not already seen this movie and you don't want to be spoiled, bookmark this video and come back later if you still have questions. Now, I've got to say, this is not the best Christopher Nolan movie. I'm a massive Christopher Nolan fan. I think the Nolan Batmans are the best Batmans. Sorry, that's just my opinion, and that will never change Maybe it might. I don't know. This new Batman looks pretty good. And it's got Robert Pattinson, which we've just seen in this movie, who did a fantastic job. Uh, but I will say this is a really, it's a decent Christopher Nolan movie. It's very clearly a Christopher Nolan movie with explosions and action. And, and he tries to confuse people. He sure does. That's him, right? Just like Inception. But let's talk about Tenet. Now, Tenet features something called inversion, okay? Now, basically, that's the bullets. It's the stuff you see going backwards. It looks like it's going backwards, but really, it's just moving backwards in time, right? It's been sent from the future back in time. It's just constantly moving backwards. So it's basically like you have one timeline going this way and one going this way. So how can you tell when a human is inverted? Well, they go through what's called a temporal pincer, and you can tell that they are because... Well, oxygen doesn't move through inverted lungs. They explain this. So you have to wear a oxygen mask, an oxygen mask. And so anyone who's wearing an ox oxygen mask or a mask in general probably um, is, is inverted, okay, at least in this movie. So you start off with this crazy stuff happening at the opera. Um, the protagonist, because he doesn't have a name, which I thought was actually really super interesting, and I was kind of a fan of that aspect of this movie. The protagonist, his life is in danger, and he's about to get killed, and this mysterious guy saves him. Uh, he comes in, he's got a little keychain dangling on his backpack. He inverts a bullet, catches a bullet, so to speak, and um, saves his life, right? Now, he's there because he's working for, like, the CIA or the government, and there's some crazy thing going on, and that really doesn't matter. So don't even worry about that. And then what continues for about the next half hour really doesn't matter either. Now the protagonist is goes to Tenet, that's he learns the word tenet, T-E-N-E-T. -E -E uh, he, he goes to this thing and they're explaining it all to him because he had, instead of giving up his, his operatives, uh, he opted to take a pill to kill himself, but oh, it didn't really kill himself. Listen, and then they use some like crazy big words. That, like I said, that half hour really doesn't matter. They're trying to explain to you in version, which it's not a real thing, so they're making up explaining it. They even mentioned a nuclear fission thing, which annoyed my husband because he works in nuclear power, and he went on and on about how that's not true, that wouldn't happen, that doesn't work that way. Anyway, it's a bit pretentious. The, that 30 minutes, just forget it. All you need to know is inversion time, time backwards. That's it, right? It's backwards, but it's inverted. That's it. And then, so now the protagonist goes on and he ends up recruiting Robert Pattinson or talks with Robert Pattinson about their, listen, this part's silly too, right? They need to meet Kat. So they get um, a drawing and they, it, listen, again, doesn't really matter. That whole part doesn't really matter. The main thing you need to know about the drawing is that Sater uh, is holding it above her head, right? He knows it was a fake and he, th you know, he's threatening her basically and using this, uh, you know, I'll go to the police type thing, using it to, to keep her with him. And, you know, he says like, I will let you not see your son and all this other stuff. So like, listen again, 
that's not the major part. That it really doesn't matter. That part of the story is it's a, all right, um, but you don't need to know it. And like I said, they use a lot of big words to try to explain this thing. You don't need to know it. You just need to know backwards. Okay, that's all you need to know. So let's get into the meat and bones of this. When they are trying to destroy the drawing for Cat, uh, which ends up not happening um, because Seder says he has a, a inclination of the future or something like that, Feel, gut feelings of the future. He's in touch with the future is what's happening. But we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, they go in and there's this big fight between this this two individuals, so you think, um, with uh, masks and, and um, suits. So the protagonist is fighting with someone and it turns out he's fighting with himself. Now, I will say this is the part where I was like, oh, it, this part totally clicked. Robert Pattinson chases one guy around. He grabs his mask. He pulls it off. He looks at him. And then you don't know what happens, right? He says he takes care of it, uh, but he rushes in and he stops the protagonist from shooting the other one. He says, stop. Uh, we've been comp- We got to go. We've been compromised. All you need to know is we've been compromised. Um, and he said, what happened to the other one? And he said, I took care of it. Now, when he pulled the mask up, I immediately went, oh, it's either himself, but probably not or the protagonist. It's got to be, right? The way that he looked, the look that he gave, I was like, oh, that's got to be future him. This is going to come back around. Immediately figured that part out. Uh, And I was right because it is, and actually both of the the characters are because it's one goes before it goes in the temporal pincer, uh, uh, the second time, and then one after. So this is the same character moving forward and backwards, okay? Because he's going through. The whole thing is they're trying to save Kat in the future. Again, this is a time travel thing where it's always happened. In fact, the protagonist has also been the person who founded Tenet. Now, this was pretty obvious when he, um, the protagonist asked Robert Pattinson's character, Neil, who recruited him, and he said, oh, it doesn't matter right now. But why is he, he's not going to tell him because why? Because it's him, and you never know if you tell someone their future, it might change their course of action, and he doesn't want that to happen. So instead of saying, you recruited me in the future, don't worry about it, he just said, don't worry about it, right? Now, also at one moment, Kat is talking about seeing a woman jump off the boat um, with Seder, uh, who is her husband, and um, it, immediately my husband goes, oh, it's her. And I said, what? He goes, oh, that was her. It, like in the future. It's like her future self came back and she just saw herself jump off the boat. And I was like, you know what? You're probably right. Guess what? Right again. Uh, because she does go back to kill Seder to get rid of Seder. Um, and actually, it's really funny because she says, and then he disappeared and we never saw him again. And guess what? That's exactly what happens. He disappears because she goes back in time to get, it's all time travel stuff. Which, yes, time travel stuff can be super confusing. But basically, the main thing you need to know is everything happened as it was supposed to, okay? The protagonist in the way future founds Tenet. Um, they send stuff back uh, through time. But when Seder was working in a radiated area after a nuclear fallout, he discovered something and it had instructions um, from the future. Basically, the future, <laughs> this is where it gets a little crazy and can definitely be confusing. In the future, the world is screwed, okay? There's been climate change and it's just absolutely destroying. So what does the future say? Well, if we send this stuff back, because they have something that will literally invert the earth, um, it will change change the earth and guess what? We won't have climate change. So we're going to send all this stuff, we're going to invert it, put it all back, all back in time, and hopefully someone will find it and put it together, uh, leave it for us, signal that it's left, it's done by killing himself. Uh, we'll know that it's there, we'll get it, and we'll invert the earth and we'll be cool, okay? Because basically this, uh, the person who has discovered this algorithm, uh, instead of just killing herself, she, you know, it's one of those things you discover something and you realize, oh no, this is very dangerous. She kills herself, but she also splits the algorithm up into, I believe it was nine pieces. Um, so Seder has been searching for those and he's finding the ninth one here, uh, in, in Tenet, in the movie. So, Why is it so bad? I mean, you don't know what's going to happen. These people are like, well, we're going to die anyway. So if we end up killing everyone back in the past, whatever, if if that's not what happens, we save the earth. Yay. That's basically that plot, um, that plot point. So they're putting it all together. And when they're going to be leaving it, he's got it all put, or Seder's got it all put together, actually. But he's got his people burying it. Well, Tenet, which has been, again, 
planned out in the future by the protagonist. He, he founded it. Um, of course, he doesn't know that at this point, but he did. Uh, it was in order to stop this from happening. Okay. Stop, stop the algorithm from being left where it was supposed to be left uh, and stop the people in the future, scientists or whoever, uh, from inverting the earth and possibly destroying all of humanity. All right. Which is nice. Like, let's not destroy all of humanity. Right. Uh, like, let's take our chances, I guess, with global warming. I don't know. And climate change. But hey, anyways, they end up with two teams. They need to go in um, because they need to stop Seder's people from actually burying, um, burying this and leaving it for the future. So they're in there. They've got two teams. Of course, um, the protagonist and Neil are on separate teams. Um, and you see that dangling keychain again. Uh, that There's a, a soldier with a dangling keychain who stands up and uh, blocks, takes a shot for the protagonist while he's trying to make sure that he can get this all done. Um, and then later, uh, you see them all come out and, yeah, we did it. <laughs> but basically, it's the protagonist and Neil uh, and this other guy talking. The other guy doesn't really matter that much. He's just there to explain stuff to make it easier. Um, and so they say, we're going to split this up. And Neil's like, no, I've got something I've got to do. Listen, so Neil went again through another temporal pincer. And he went through and he's the one who blocks the bullet um, to, to save the protagonist. He's the one who had the keychain on. So he's the one who saved the protagonist at the beginning at the opera. Um, so basically, again, this is what Neil was always supposed to do, right? Um, and he ends up dying. Uh, but the reason you can see him, there's like actually three or four versions of him. It's all this temporal pincer, right? Whenever they go through it, they invert themselves and they have to go through it again to be back on track. He actually sees himself during the whole mission um, going to where he's going to go to save the protagonist. It's all, I mean, I get that that can be like super confusing, but you just got to try to realize, like, it just, it's, it's time travel, right? Basically, they talk about it's inversion, it's not time travel, it's just time travel. Just listen, think of it as time travel, and he was always meant to do that. He, he was able to stop um, the algorithm from getting buried and left for the future, but he's also, because of time travel, just say it, just time travel, he's able to also go back and save the protagonist's life uh, more than once. He went back to the opera to save his life then. So it's all very much that way. And even at the end, he tells um, the protagonist that you are the one, you are the one that recruited me. Uh, and he says, you know, this is the end of a beautiful friendship. And the protagonist says, uh, for me, it is just the beginning um, because they haven't even really met yet in the protagonist world. Uh, he has, Neil has come all the way that far back uh, to do this, to help the protagonist out. Must've been his right hand man, his best friend, who knows? There's some theories out there that he's Kat's kid, but like, I don't think he's Kat's kid. I think that's way too far fetched and just silly business. But basically that's the main stuff that happens at Tenet. And like I said, if you're super confused, just think it's time travel. Listen, I know the synopsis all says it's not time travel. It is. And, and that's probably the most confusing part about it. Um, I mean, even think about it in the moment when Kat gets shot. Uh, they say inverted bullets can really just destroy you because of radiation and stuff. Well, how does Kat heal? They take her back. It, uh, through a temporal pincer uh, so that the bullet actually goes back in time as well and she ends up having a scar yes but that was kind of that whole fight scene that I told you guys about when they're fighting the protagonist basically because <laughs> it was definitely him uh, who went back and they brought Kat around it's just it's it's time travel if you're confused just think oh it's time travel okay that makes sense that makes sense. She's the one who is jumping off the boat right like we talked about earlier she's the one who um who takes Seder and drags him away so that he disappears. Uh, so, you know, basically this is what happened. They use time travel. The protagonist, he did this all, set it all up in the future, but obviously his future self couldn't come back for some reason. Maybe he died. Who knows? But Neil was able to come back. They set it all up. It's It was stuff that was always supposed to happen in order to stop the algorithm from falling into the wrong hands in the future uh, and possibly destroying the earth. There you go. That's Tenet Explained. If you still have questions about the movie, let me know down below. Let's talk. Let's discuss. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it. I thought it was great. And once it all comes together into a neat little bow at the end, when the protagonist realizes, uh, you know, that basically it was him um, and he's supposed to just start this all and, and he recruits, he recruits Neil himself 
Um, again, it ties into a neat little bow, which I really liked. I thought it made it a really, really, really good movie. Very, very interesting, unique, and fun. Um, but again, there's that half hour of like pretentious babble um, that you don't really need to listen to. You just need to know it's time moving backwards. The end. Because then you're going to get, if you try to listen to all those big words that mean nothing, <laughs> like, listen. It'll be more confusing. Uh, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on more videos like this one. As always, you can follow me over on Instagram and Twitter. I'm at Mama's Geeky over there. M-A-M-A-S-G-E-K-Y.